Hello and welcome guys. So we want to make an octree. Um, and the benefit of an octree is, as you can see in this diagram, the terrain that's farther from the player um, decreases resolution. Uh, and, and the player is not actually going to... Well, the, the end goal is that the player doesn't notice uh, the fact that the terrain farther away is at a lower resolution. Um, and this works quite well. Quite a few games use it. Um, and I'm any any massive scale expansive terrain system is very likely to use an octree or something similar like a um, MIP map or something like that um, but we're gonna be using an octree it's uh, actually not that complicated but um, before we can actually dive in and start coding this uh, we need to know uh, some some math and kind of the concept behind it um, and I think this will help really help us understand the code that we're gonna write so an octree, as you can see from this diagram over here, is is made up of many, um, essentially, nodes is what we're going to call them. Um, but it's basically the square right here. Um, and any one of these squares could be considered a nerd e node, even this outer square. This outer big square would be called the uh, root node. Um, but we're going to learn, learn some, uh, so we're going to see what the math is going to look like uh, and some of the variables and how that's going to work. So uh, each uh, we're going to have some global variables that apply to all nodes. And the global variables are going to be the chunk resolution, um, which is going to basically say how many voxels, high, wide, and tall, um, our nodes are going to have. right? And then the voxel scale will say for like these super small nodes right here, like say, we have a node that's really small, uh, the smaller nodes. The voxel scale will tell us exactly how big each individual voxel is. Um, now we could really, the voxel scale, when we change it, it's going to essentially change the scale of everything. So we could just rename this to scale. Um, but really it's just, for now, uh, we're just going to stick with voxel scale since the, the main noticeable effect is going to be that each voxel is going to be smaller or larger. Um, so now, now that we have that, uh, we're going to have uh, some math. So when, when we um, build our world, we're going to decide this uh, thing, this divisions number, right? And this is going to say how many times are we going to divide our node. Uh, and so a divisions number of one would give us essentially just a single, you know, a single node in the world. A divisions number of two would give us uh, four nodes, or if we were in 3D, it would be eight. But right now we're just doing it in 2D to keep it uh, keep it simple. Um, and uh, as you can see, the nodes are scale. The 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 root node would be this outer node right here, right? Uh, divisions number of three, the root node is getting bigger. Uh, and a divisions number of four, you can still see the same thing. The root node is getting much much bigger. So what might be obvious now is that in order to uh, in order to preserve these smaller nodes, the ones that are near the player, th those smaller nodes need to always be uh, 16 by 16 in world size. See, these outer nodes, they can get bigger because they're farther away. But the inner nodes, we need the smaller ones to stay small. So when we actually build this, what we have to do is we have to start out with a big enough root node such that as we scale down, to the child node, to the child node, to the child node, that that the small soup, the, the smallest nodes are going to be indeed 16 by 16, right? And they're going to be the correct world size because if we if we just kept this uh, root node um, uh, this small, we would start dividing it in half and dividing it in half and dividing it in half, right? And that that's not going to give us the right chunk size, which we don't want that. So so we have to start. We have to figure out how to get the root node to be big enough based on how many divisions we want it to have. So divisions of four, uh, we're gonna have to figure out how to make this root node big enough such that when we divide it, we get smaller ones. Um, and so to do that, uh, I figured out this, uh, this that we're gonna have to figure out this node resolution number. Now, really quick, the node resolution number, all it stands for is the number of small, uh, the smallest nodes that we're gonna have, how many of those would fit in the root node? Um, uh, height-wise, width-wise, and depth-wise, but we're just we're just doing height-wise for now, right? 
Um, so how many of those? And we can use this node resolution number later to scale the root node. Um, so to calculate that node resolution, it's 2 to the power of divisions minus 1. So say we have divisions of 4. Uh, what we'd have to do is um, 2 to the power of 4 minus 1. And uh, I'm really struggling with this uh, mouse here. <laughs> uh, but uh, that would be 2 to the power of 3. And that's going to be 8, right? And as you can see, this, this math, it works out. Uh, I've, I've already figured it out beforehand. It took me a while. Um, but uh, it, it is, this is, this does, this does, uh, when you use the equation, it will come out correctly. So you'll get the correct node resolution um, by simply plugging in the divisions number into this equation. So that's cool. Uh, and then we also have to have this node scale, right? So now, now we can go to figure out exactly what we're going to multiply the scale of this node by. Um, and that's going to be this node scale. And uh, that's going to be equal to voxel scale times chunk, re chunk resolution times node resolution. So the size, essentially, of an individual voxel times the number of voxels that we're going to have times the node resolution. Does that make sense? All right, so once we get that number, uh, we'll use it for scaling our nodes uh, the way we want to. Um, and then we'll have to figure out the position of each node. Now what's interesting here is the root node position is just going to be essentially the center of the world, right? Zero. But then its child node has to move in this direction right here. So so we have to say essentially this offset number. Uh, so we're going to say offset, um, which we'll figure out an offset, right, F for each child. Um, which we're going to have eight offsets. We're going to manually code those. Um, but essentially, it'll be one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, because we're going to be in 3D. Currently, we're in 2D. Um, but then we have that offset number, right? And we're going to multiply it by the node scale. So this number right here that we've already calculated back here, we're going to calculate it. We're going to calculate the node position using the node scale. Um, and then uh, we're going to multiply it by the offset. So what essentially this is going to do is it's going to move the child over from the center of the world, from the center of its parent, sorry, all the way to over here. But that's too much. It's moving the child so that essentially the child node would be like right over here, and we don't we don't want that. So um, and so the center of it, it would be right here, right? So so we don't want that. Um, and so we have to minus or subtract. Um, a, vec a vector 3.1, essentially we have, to, we have to subtract half. So as you can see, there's node scale divided by 2. We'll explain what the vector is in a second. But node scale divided by 2 is going to essentially subtract half of that, right? Um, but it is just a number, so it's not giving us this, this arrow. Um, it's not going to give us this direction that moves our node uh, in the world. Uh, so instead of just getting this this fancy uh, this node scale, say the node scale is eight, right? Uh, divided by two, it's going to be four, right? So we can't really use four, the number four, to move um, our node back in this direction. So what we do is we then multiply it by a vector three dot one, um, and a vector three dot one is essentially uh, 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 an arrow. We can think of it as an arrow. Um, but it's also an offset position, so so an offset position. Um, and then here's so here's the node scale, right? Um, and then when we multiply, uh, when we divide node scale by two, we're then getting this this length right here. So this this whole length all the way up and down is node scale, half of the node scale. And then we multiply this length by that offset, which gives us um, a offset that looks that, that that's essentially moves us by half of the node scale. So, um, using more math mathematically correct terms, we're scaling this vector, um, essentially this offset. We're scaling the vector by half of the node scale. Um, and so, this vector 
uh, will then be able to move us back uh, in this direction by half of uh, the node's scale, which will then give us the node, the child node positioned exactly where we want it. And then obviously we do that for each direction as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, other than that, uh, we then obviously have to add the parent node position um, because as you can see, the uh, the parents the parents uh, offset is needs to also be included in that because say if um, say if we we have this the root node right and then we uh, when we offset it we move it to here right well then the next child needs to know its parents its parents center position right here so that it can offset from this parent center position to over here um, and then that's what this uh, parent node position is going to be um, and then from that from that from that parents position center position we have to offset the child node um, and we'll just do that for uh, recursively all the way down the tree of notes uh, yeah that's all the math and uh, can't wait for you guys to dive in. Hopefully it made sense. If it didn't, there's the live chat at the top. Um, and you can ask for me, get, ask for help from me. Um, you can also join the Discord. I'm usually on there. Yeah, see ya.